Welcome to this week's video. This week I'm going to install the V2 mod chip within 8 minutes, including flashing the firmware to the chip as well. So this is the chip that I use. I buy them from AliExpress. Just search RP2040 from AliExpress itself. So first up, you just need to connect the small USB-C adapter. Then plug it into your PC. So this one actually had firmware already installed, which is a bit of a change. The chances are it's going to be quite old, so decide to install new firmware. If you plug it in and it doesn't show up, it means it has firmware on it. So to reflash it, you need to hold the boot button and then connect it, and then it will show up as an external device. Latest chip firmware in link in description. Then I just delete the two files that are already on there, and then it's simply a case of just copying the UF2 file to the root of the chip. It will flash, it will make a noise, and then it will automatically eject. Now we need to open up, so four tri wings on the back. And then Phillips head along the side. And then a few Phillips head screws on the back of each shield. So once in, first disconnect the battery. Then we need to remove the heatsink. Once removed, we need to get a very small pin and very carefully bend the tabs out. You do not want to be slipping, otherwise you might knock some chips off. So just work your way around, releasing as many as you can. You don't have to do all of them, the more the better. And then just carefully lift it up and it will peel away. We just need to remove the excess solder paste. We'll replace that in a bit. Then we'll quickly prep the cable to get soldered on. So we're using a V2 chip. It does come with both. Put a bit of solder on the pads. Flux and solder makes it go easier. And then a quick clean of isopropyl. We slide it back into place, just suck it underneath and then just line up the pins and make sure that they all line up along the side and know you've got the correct ones. I use Kapton tape to hold it in place before I start soldering. The trick is to be quick and keep moving it. I have my temperature at 360, you don't want it too hot. If you hold it in place too long you're going to knock the chips off. This is made a lot easier if you can use some kind of a microscope. Once happy the solder's on securely, clean of isopropyl. And then just quickly solder the earthing legs at the bottom. Now 
all capped on tape off and then a new piece just along the bottom to cover what you just soldered to make sure there's no shorts then you gently peel off the NAND chip put the shield back on if it comes off and then make the connection to the board itself just feed the ribbon cable in, close it up the NAND chip clips onto the board and the connection at the top clicks where the original NAND used to connect now for a quick test, so we use a bit of plastic underneath to make sure I don't get any shorts, reattach the battery, press the power button and then for the first time it does take a few seconds, the light flashes as it's trying to train itself, it eventually should turn yellow and then the no SD card means that it's been a success. Now ready to put back together, put the right amount of thermal paste back on. Then you need to gently bend out the top of this edge because it just fits over the top where the ribbon cable is. Bend all the other tabs back as well that you bent out and then just gently put it back on. A little bit of capped on tape on the top of it again to stop the chip from shorting out on the metal plate. And then you just need to make some markings on the back heat shields for this need to be cut. A few people have mentioned about trying to hook it over the top so you don't have to cut the heat shield. But I've never found a decent way of doing this, so unfortunately the shield does need to be cut. I found the best way is to use scissors and then round the corners to use wire snips. It's just a case of cutting, measuring, cutting, and making sure you're happy before you finally fit it. Then the heat sink back on with the right amount of thermal paste. three screws back in, connect the battery back up, a little bit more capped on tape around making sure it's covering the edges so it can't short, a bit more thermal paste, heat shield back on, all the screws back in, SD card back in with its final screw. and a little bit more capped on tape to hold the chip into place a little bit more securely so it doesn't bang around when it gets moved. Another quick test, turn it on, make sure we're still going. A couple of flashes, should turn to yellow and then should we got the no SD card. Back cover back on. All the screws back in and then that's it. And now we have a fully modded V2 ready to go. The V1 install works exactly the same, it's just a different orientation for when the chips get soldered on. And that's it done, full install, firmware flashing, all complete within 9 minutes. Any questions please leave them in the comments and I'll reply to as many as possible. Thanks very much for watching, please like, comment and subscribe.